on tonight's episode, it's off to God's country to play with fire. The goal is for everybody to leave with their eyebrows today. Good goal. Working with a father and son team who live out the old adage, iron sharpens iron. Ah, come on! <laughs> and we learn the hard way. <laughs> There's no crying and blacksmithing. Hello. If you're just joining us, uh, we're leaving Denver, where uh, I've just addressed the accrediting commission of career schools and colleges and uh, what I believe was a riveting speech in a ballroom over at a local hotel. Here's what it looked like. So I thought, let's, let's do a little segment about people in San Francisco who actually work. All right, that's enough of that. From time to time, I'll talk to educators about what I believe is a need to reinvigorate the skilled trade. So in what is perhaps uh, a burst of serendipitous programming, because somebody's got to do it, crew is headed out to a, uh, a local forge in Pine? Pine, Colorado. Pine, Colorado, toward the Rocky Mountains to meet a father and a son who have been making things the old-fashioned way for 25 years. Five minutes, we'll get the cameras shouldered up, and uh, do you want to just roll right out of the car? Yeah, I'm just going to go in and say hello. Now that we've arrived, time to check in with our cameraman, Troy, get a lay of the land. Hey. Hello. Hello, hello. How's it look? It's like our perfect environment. Really? Yeah. It really is. I love it. Man, it's so rare to have an enthusiastic cameraman on somebody who's got to do it. And to walk into a setting like this, cold, and hear that it is a, it's a dream come true, a fantasy about to be realized. What, 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 why are you so happy with it, visually? It has a very industrial vibe. We have a couple great characters. Yeah, and truth be told, we have such brilliant B-roll because we've had some time to do a little sexy footage. Mm -hmm. we we're calling it sexy time. Here we go. Pick up your hammer. Yeah, that's really good. Set the hammer down and pick the hammer up. Great, okay, we're done with the hammer. Put the hammer down. Lift your hands up. Okay, hold that pose. That's very cool. Yeah, you have dirty hands too, don't you? Got some good calluses there too, nice. Give me your best Clint Eastwood. Awesome, guys. That's great. And I would say we don't even need a host on this one. We just roll <laughs> you know the B-roll and great. set. I'll wait in the car. Troy will take over whatever hosting duties remain, and you guys can just come together in a happy explosion of sexy time. So really, that's a wrap. Yeah, Steve? Thanks, Troy. See you on the next one. <laughs> I've always had a soft spot for these kinds of made-in-America craftsmanship stories, especially when it stays all in the family and maybe picking up a little something for the office. All right, are, 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 are we all gathered? This is we it. are gathered. This is the whole king. All right, now the show begin. I mean, everywhere I turn, I see something cool. Is that chandelier a thing you made? That's part of a series of seven we're doing in a lodge in Montana. Yeah, this is amazing. Every detail on it is hand-forged, hand-fitted. I mean, this is a custom item, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So how'd it work? A lodge in Montana calls you guys and says what? The owner came to the shop. Yeah. He said, had a picture of something that we had done and said, I, I need seven like this. How did he find that? In a magazine. <laughs> he tracks you down, he comes here. Yes, sir. And so every piece of the chandelier was done here? Yes. With the exception of the glass, we had a, a custom glass blower right. do the glass for us. And how complicated is this in the, in the realm of things well, you it's, do? It's crazy detailed, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of stuff going on in it. If I can ask you, what's it sell for? About 10 grand. There's 100 hours in this. Everywhere I look, I've got questions, but. Well, just shout them out. Do you want to do the sign? You want to look at your sign? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which oh is why God. we're here. Ah, uh, so you've been working on this. Rory has been working on this. Dude, this is amazing. Yeah, it's looking OK. Your boy does good work. Yes, he does. I, I learned him good. So what's it made of? And, and tell me everything. Well, we got steel, copper background, some uh, boiler plate. We noticed your logo has a lot of pit, a little bit rough to it, so try to copy that, as well as not having a super clean copper. Show some noise inside of that. It's riveted together, no welds going on. This is, this is unbelievable. I mean, I don't know if we have a wall that's gonna support it. Oh, there's more that, that attaches to it as well. So what do we do? It's not done? Not yet. Are we, that's what we're gonna finish today? 
So now we have a mission. Now yes, I sir. actually have something to do. Yeah. All right, I can finish my own sign. What else can I do? Anything? Is, there, is this the focus? We're going to let you make a leaf. A leaf? Yeah, a leaf. What are we going to do first? Build a fire. A fire. A fire. Follow me. To build a fire. This is a uh, side draft uh, hood, stove hood. And the forge itself is this unit here. My forge is a uh, old style side blast water jacketed tourier. It's an old design that not a lot of people use. It appeared as though you just reached right through the flame there to grab some of the ash. Yeah, some of us are dumber than others. You really don't have any feeling left in your arms at all, do you? You just do it quickly. You've been burned more times than you can count, I'm guessing? Yes. You guys barbecue on the weekends? Not with this stuff. Nah, I got propane. I mean, to start a barbecue must be like the most boring thing in the world for you now. Fire. Now, using a hand hammer at the anvil, we're going to be bringing this bar up here to the edge, and we're going to hit it, and turn it, and hit it, and turn it, and hit it, and we're going to cause this bar to reduce in mass and get longer into a taper. OK. I'm going to swing this right across your belly. What I'm going to do is step over here. And there's a fair chance I'm going to bugger it up, because I haven't made a leaf at the anvil in more than a little while. Well, I like the way you manage expectations. Keep everything on the edge there. Don't put it in the middle of the ammo. Why? Because you don't want to hit the ammo. You don't want to leave scars on my anvil. What's the anvil made of? It's a cast steel anvil, so it'll be a, some kind of uh, tool steel. This is basically what we're shooting for. Really, really hope right. my hammer head set nicely. Yeah, right? We're making this. I'm in Colorado, learning the finer points of blacksmithing. This is where everything begins, is right here. Over the course of time, I have to think this was the, it's gotta be the center of things. It, it was the focal point of the community. Before the Industrial Revolution, the blacksmith was a vital staple of every town in Western civilization. Everything from kitchen utensils and construction tools to gates and weapons were forged and repaired by the town smithy, the blacksmith has been at the center of civilized life since the Old Testament. Without the blacksmith or the smithy or the forge in the community to make the tools, repair the tools, shoe the horses, it just it just never ended. Yeah. I, I, one time I got to read a daily log of a 1912 blacksmith of what he did each day yeah. and, and what he took in payment each day. Not necessarily not, money. Not necessarily money. Sometimes it was a bushel of, of potatoes. How many potatoes you want for that mirror up there? That's a lot of potatoes, Mike. Right. <laughs> you just pulled that out of the fire and touched it to see if it was hot? Is that what I'm just seeing? I told you I'm not the smartest cookie. <laughs> see, he's so happy, Mike. That's why he's so happy. Yeah? Yeah. Just, just can't, you can't help it. Because he doesn't feel pain. Exactly. Notice the texture Craig is able to add to the leaf. Look at that. Not bad. Now it's my turn. Hey, hot stuff. It's hot stuff. It's hot steel. All right. Coach you, Murray. <laughs> get in here and tell me what to do for crying out loud. I'm going to just start hitting stuff. OK, first thing, get your thumb off the handle. Yeah. There you go. Good form. You're looking nice here. Standing upright. Thank you. I'm trying to maintain it. Direct posture. And hit the tip. Always aiming for the tip. You can hit a little harder, too. I don't want to break your anvil. Hit the anvil. Sorry about that. Oh, oh that's oh. a bad sound, isn't it? Oh. The pain. Just the very tip. Just smack, turn, smack, turn, and get that material to move. And hit, yep. turn, hit, Perfect. turn, hit, turn, hit, OK, back turn, on the fire. Hit, turn. Another quick heat. What's it like growing up with him? Not too bad. No. Working with dad. It was also as a form of punishment. And if you got grounded, yeah. you came to the shop. Come to the shop, make a leaf. Yeah, if you got sent home from school for any other reason than being super smart. You're straight to the forge. Well, that's really a mixed message, man. You're using the means of making a living as punishment. <laughs> Congress <laughs> says I can use my upbringing and my kids any way I want. And now forge either side of it. Bring out the, uh, Pull the, the lobes out. The lobes out. 
good. We're gonna change this one up just a little bit. I'm gonna give you this. Yeah? No, no, you don't get this one. <laughs> He's a tease, your dad. Hey, yes, he is. I'm gonna give you, no, 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 no. You get to have this. Uh-huh. Right hand forward, left hand behind. You're gonna strike, and we're gonna walk a groove. All right. When I nod my head, hit it. Go. Hit it. I can't help but notice the dozens of tools Craig has hanging on his wall all slightly different to create numerous effects in the steely shaping. I see what we're doing. Yeah. Look at this, we're working together. There you this go. is awesome. You're a natural. Done, it's a leaf. I made a leaf, man, I made a leaf, I made a leaf. It happened. Hot stuff up here. Grab you want me to cool this off now, or no, I gotta, I gotta knock it off. You wanna cut it off? Well, yeah, that's not a leaf. That's gonna look terrible on your keychain. Okay, there you go. All right. Hold and cut. Hold and cut. And hit hard. And watch him. Woo-hoo-hoo, Troy! That was a close one. You have to admire Troy's fortitude. He nearly got a red-hot leaf right in his lap, but he didn't bat an eye. This is a air pneumatic power hammer. Who invented that? Some really smart guy. This, one, this particular hammer was built by a very good friend of mine. We're starting to pull and down it goes. Good grief. If you can control it, you can do one blow. Hey, right. you're natural. Here's a little game. No, no, Woo. no, no, Woo. no, 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 no. Now, it's important that you keep this kind of level uh -huh. as you're going through it, because either you fulcrum it or it'll fulcrum you. Start at the, at the tip. Yeah. This is like feed the baby. Drop your elbow. Am I looking to make a point on this thing, or am I just looking to get it? What's well, my goal? You, you pretty well buggered it up, but you can put a point hey, on it. You buggered it up. What's the matter with that? It's not pointy. Well, I'm, I'm, not done, I'm not done yet. Yeah, he's an artist. I was doing something artistic, Craig. Okay. I, sorry, I, I did not recognize that. Moment. No, no, well, there's a point in every artistic endeavor where great confusion reigns. Ah. We're going to let you play with Bob here for a second. Introduce me to Bob. Come on over and say hi to Bob. So this is a 250-pound hunk of steel. This one can hurt you. There's no forgiveness this here. This will leave a mark. What can you do to a penny with that? Well, first blow would flatten it, second blow would tear the penny in half. There it went. Tore the penny in half. Did I tell you? Yep, and smashed it down. <laughs> wow, Hot, just like dude. that. Yeah, that's kinetic energy working for you. Hold it, hold it gently in your hand. Gently, <laughs> gently in your hand. Maybe that's how the first pair of tongs were invented. Yeah, right? Let's do some more. Same deal. Keep it level. There, that, that is, I think, what we're talking about. Now it's abstract art. <laughs> Make it long and pointy for me, would you? You're a musician. We're going to uh, do a uh, three-man striking here. It, it's a round robin thing, so this is called action. And when I want you to stop, I'll just turn the hammer and run it straight off. All right. Who goes second? I do. Ah, come on! <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Now to sum up, it's really, really hard to make a 
a really, really good point uh, on the end of a, a piece of uh, steel, but we did. Now we're gonna do something else, somewhere else. So, involving the sign, right? You do something with the sign? Something with the sign. Something with the sign. I'm in beautiful Pine, Colorado, with father and son blacksmiths, Craig and Rory, finishing up a little decoration for the office. We're just putting some uh, touches on this decorative piece, which is gonna go under the sign. Right, Rory? Yeah, this is what the sign will hang off of the mounts. It's the transition between the mounts and the sign. So it'll be well hung? Yes. How old were you the first time you? I was, I was forging on them at 10. 10 years old? Yeah, and what it was is I was watching dad work <laughs> and I, and I, I can mimic him, right. but I just never stopped. So I was getting these really long tapers. Yeah. And he actually stopped and watched me and was taking lessons from me. Not bad. What's the long-term plan? Doing this till I die. How long are you gonna live? As long as I can. <laughs> Forging metal isn't something that just happens instantly. It takes a lot of patience and even more skill to coax these shapes out of a glowing hot piece of steel. There's this idea that every advancement happens or builds on the latest thing before it. But I think if you really look back, you see, you know, entire ways of doing things that just got lost. Blacksmithing was very nearly lost. How? Due to the uh, uh, technological breakthroughs and advancement in the 1800s when things started becoming mechanized. And the blacksmiths almost created their own demise by being the ones that made the equipment that started the technological revolution. That's irony. And then in the 70s, a new spark began. But oh, instead nice. of industrial smithing and stuff, now we are, are uh, artist blacksmiths. Right. So it's the artistry that kept the craft alive. <clears throat> yeah. These two use ancient technology to create modern art. Tempted to say it's ironic. The goal is for everybody to leave with their eyebrows today. Good goal. Harder. You there? Well, that's a rivet, doggone it. Sure, you don't want a job? Let's see how the show does. <laughs> what do you look for in an employee today? Uh, I mean, what's the what's the ideal person? Rory. Yeah. Yeah. If I could find another Rory, somebody with with his skill, his determination. The willingness to work, willingness to get your hands in there and get dirty and, and do the job. It's blacksmithing, it. you know, and there's, there's no crying in blacksmithing. <laughs> <laughs> there's no crying in blacksmithing, I love it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, that's looking good. So there's no nuts, there's no bolts, there's no screwing. This is all heat and riveting. Yeah. America. And we could have. <laughs> America. <laughs> the rings obviously are hot. Hey, stop it! No. Boom. 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 Okay. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see it hung. Huh? Well, what do you say we take this outside somewhere, someplace that makes Troy happy, and we'll hold it up, and we'll get some beautiful sort of portraiture for you, and I'll say something fitting, and, and then the show will be over. And then how would that be? I don't know yet. Fade to black, and we're out of here? Not yet. Almost. We'll be fading to black very shortly, but not until we say goodbye and thanks. Goodbye and thanks. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're going to go over here. It's going to be great. All right, are you, are you ready? As ready as I'm going to be. Troy, are you ready? Sign's beautiful. The shot's perfect enough. I was just looking for a simple yes or no. All right, guys, up you go then. We're up. You good? Yep. All right, this is very heavy, so I'll be brief. Uh, I owe a huge grat of uh, attitude. <laughs> I think you know what I mean. I'm very grateful uh, to Craig and, what's your name again? Rory. Rory, I'll never forget Craig and, you sure it's not Corey? I'm sure. All right, it's, it's, your mouth. it's Roy. Look, look down through that back. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, how about this? How about this, is that better? Yeah. All right, this is a perfect place for me to say goodbye and thank you, because here at the Dragon Forge, I've had a great time. I have two enormous blisters, but I'm leaving with maybe the coolest thing anybody's ever made for me before. 
Can you hold it steady? I'm, I'm Is it, would, it, would it kill you just to hold it steady? Okay. All right, just, uh, uh, I'm, I'm almost done. It's been a fabulous trip here to, where am I, Pine? Is it Pine? <laughs> pine, pine, Colorado. Pine, Colorado. By golly, it's God's country out here. The mountains and the pine trees and the real blacksmiths and the forging and everything. <laughs> Everybody's so cool and awesome. Seriously, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And goodbye. <laughs> uh, we've got to rethink these maps. <laughs>